Let's go. <laughs> there it is. You're listening to another Woodshop podcast, the OKS podcast of its type. Your hosts are Daniel Dunlap of Daniel Dunlap Woodworks and Peter Kapar of Petrie's Workshop. You can find them as well as the podcast on your favorite social media platforms. Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode 171 of Another Woodshop Podcast, where we are here to remind you that Christmas is only 3.5 months away. That's roughly 15 weeks or just over 100 and seven days for the patrons we have currently it's 109 but if 109 so seven for the, the patrons math, 105 for the other, just Sunday, over 100 days and something. if you're like us you're probably not ready so strap in and strap on that pair of glasses to help you write down this fire list of selling tips for the holidays what's going on dan hey man what's up hey you strapped I'm, in uh i'm strapped on <laughs> attaboy well, I'm always strapped on Dan. Yes. While I just talk and gesture with my hands, even though nobody can see it, yeah, I don't know you're going to pull up that. the list of patrons and have that read every week then. But we are, <laughs> we were very talking, excited. we were doing things and I forgot. I was doing things while Dan's looking that up. We are very excited to announce that we have officially partnered up with maker camp of East Durham, New York. Woo! Crowd goes wild. So we are going to be giving away two tickets, one through the pre-show and one we're going to be giving away through the Instagram uh, account. So you, there's going to be a post going up this week. Uh, hopefully by the time this is up for everyone on Monday or Sunday, uh, the post will be up and we're going to be doing a giveaway on, I am not stalling. The date is the 21st. So the week of the 21st, we're going to announce both on the podcast and via the uh IG account. And by the way, these are silver level, uh, the silver ticket, which means you get uh, the full hands-on experience. So you, you get the whole weekend, full hands-on experience. You get to try anything, do all the woodworking and metalworking. Touch things. Touch things. You get to touch everything. Even Jimmy. Uh, please don't tell him we said that. And uh, you can, of course, also camp as well. That is included in that pass. Camping Dan, is included. Camping nice. is included. And you get to see us. Come say hi. Also, we haven't confirmed this yet, but we feel 1.2% positive that you can transfer that ticket to somebody else if you win and you can't make it. But we need to yeah. confirm that. We'll for work out the sure details. We just 100%. we need to get a final name, and that's what we're going to give to the Maker Camp guys. But we're super excited because we're, I mean, they're sponsoring the show, and yeah, basically we're, we're just giving be... them a name. So hey, yeah. name is Ronald Reagan. One Schmanuel Schmanlap. <laughs> and speaking of names, Dan, what do you yeah, got? Yeah, speaking of names yeah. and happy campers, we have a new patron this week. It is a Jacob Green. Big shout out to Jacob Green. I We appreciate you, not just me. We appreciate we. you. Oh, you can um, include me in that. Well, I, I almost said I appreciate you, and then I was like, wait a minute, Pete's here too. I um, We appreciate about you. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, we want to uh, give a special shout out to all of our VIP patrons and uh it would almost be people... easier if you had two tabs so you wouldn't have to change over i really should but i did it smoothly i'm gonna that put that in my notes by the victor way victor aragema matthew hoff of matthew's woodworking nick brim woodworking matt maynard or matt maynard of patriotic pine Woo! steve iadarola bill burkle of wtb woodworking malcolm over at bossa nova woodworks justin at calvary customs patrick gensel square splinter Michael Flickinger, Max, and Mindy Coons over at Stubby K Studio, and Jacob Miller. Thank wow, what a crowd. One of you. We appreciate you. All fine officers in the Meh Army. Are they officers now? I thought They're they all generals. officers. Well, the generals are top tier. You know? Okay. I will do NCOs. Well, the, the, the bottom, the $2 tiers, you're like a sergeant minor, not even a sergeant you're, major. You're petty officers. You're petty. You're real petty. <laughs> <laughs> i don't um, know the rankings so we i mentioned the holidays in the intro we do have a topic for this week it is holiday prep for uh selling uh anything or doing anything honestly even if you're not selling items for the holidays just things to consider a lot of these tips we have literally a full list about 
10 to 15 items and we're going to kind of make more and then we're going to offer that it's going to be in our show notes and we're also going to post it on our site uh so you're going to be able to get all these to kind of like on use site? it like a ch- you have a site uh the, the it's like an instagram thing but like it's oh. all yeah Anyways, there's going to be a list. We're going to offer it. Well, maybe we'll do a, a Google Drive document. So you can use it as a checklist to make sure that you are on top of your stuff or just a little guideline as you listen. But before we get into that, Dan, how would you feel if we went with this? What's up, my bench? So, well, Dan. I would feel okay about that. What, what is on your bench? Uh, well, currently, uh, technically, a whole lot of uh, scraps and cutoffs. Whoa. I am swimming in scraps and cutoffs, and I don't know what to do. Actually, I do know what to do. Um, start using them for holiday prep, I guess. Wow. That would be a, that would be a nice, that would be a nice thing to do if if I had spare time, but I don't. So well, uh, Dan, it's like you're foreshadowing again. We're going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I usually pawn off my... <laughs> my scraps on local guys but i think i've given so much away that like nobody has any room so like uh i'm pretty boned um so, so anyway is nobody wants any of that dunlap wood nobody not even kayla no oh. no nope. oh. uh oh, yeah. so anyways uh nicholas Ruffcorn uh reached out to me on ig and said hey i'm actually gonna be in omaha if you have scraps i'll come get them i'm like yes please please come get them i'm dying over here so he's coming to get them hopefully Sunday. Um, this Saturday, speaking of local guys, I'm actually going to uh, a craft fair with Braden over at Little Bug Woodworking uh, just to hang out, cause trouble. Uh, I don't really have anything to take. He said I could bring some items, but like I don't have anything. I just want to go hang out. I it's guess so I much should... nicer to do one with someone. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's so nice. Now that I now that I think about it, it it sounds counterintuitive because I was just talking about how I don't have time, but I'm gonna take time to go hang out with Braden. You know what, people? Friendships are important, and you have to, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You have to nurture them. Right, so, right. How much money does he owe you? A lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go hang out with him and do that. But uh, you know, as far as what's on my actual bench what am i actually working on i mean you all know the story by now i'm working on etsy orders i'm swimming in etsy orders which is great uh i'm not complaining too much woe is me but you know it it gets a little monotonous and that's a big word don't ask me to spell it i can't monotonous um it gets a little monotonous you know and it's just kind of this the same the same thing over and over Mm. so today uh I tried to, well, let me back up Uh, a couple months ago. Yes. Months. I've said months. My DeWalt 735 planer like blew out the drive belt and the drive chain. There's two off the chain, bruh. Yeah. It was a real, it was a real cluster F. Um, anyways, uh, Nick, Nick Brim was uh, kind enough to come over and help me take it apart. And then we, we ordered the parts for it and they came like in two days and then i'm they've just been sitting around the shop ever since and yeah that's what what happened and then uh i think friday last friday after the after we recorded the podcast i had another local woodworker or maker or something uh anyways they asked me if i could plane down some boards for them they they got some uh recycled barn wood or something Mm -hmm. upcycled barn wood What's the what's the word I'm looking? Man, I just can't think it's, of these words tonight. It's up upcycled barn wood, I guess. Oh, okay. un, un, until you make something with it, it's not upcycled. You it's know just what barn I'm wood. It's uh, it's really it's rough stuff, and uh, they wanted it plain flat and stuff. And I was like, yeah, I could do that for you, no problem. Um, I I thought that I could just run it through my drum sander, but that that was a no. You were just gonna run like rough barn wood through the drum sander. Yeah, I mean it would take some time, but. I wouldn't have to fix the 735 planer, which is what I'm all about. So, but anyways, long story short, uh, I ran it through the drum sander and my drum sander did not like that one bit. Yeah. I'm not, not only did it, I mean this it's like 200 year old, like white Oak. 
Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's hard as nails. And on top of that, uh, it, it's got this, uh, it's just got grime all over it, right? So I'm running it through my drum sander and it's just burning. It's burning like crazy. No matter how light of a pass mm -hmm. I try to take, it's just burning, burning, burning. And not only is it burning, but these were clearly boards that have been inside of a barn and have been urinated on by farm animals over many decades. So as the wood is burning hey, hey, in my hey, drum Dan, sander. Hey, Dan. Hey, Dan. Uh, when you were running out through the jump sander, uh, were you wearing your pee pee? Pee? Pee pee? Pee? Pee pee? It, I, I, it, was a, it was a pee let's joke. Just, let's just, yeah, I, I get okay. what you're trying to do. It was we'll, just, we'll just cut that in post. <laughs> <laughs> it was bad. We don't edit this. We're just going to pretend the like audio I was wearing barely my... lines up. See, that's why we're talking <laughs> over each other. Uh, yep. So, anyways, yeah, it was it was a real uh, shit show. <laughs> um, so I was like, okay, dang it, I'm just gonna have to break down and uh, fix this stupid planer. And it was more headaches than I had bargained for. I worked on it for like four, five hours this morning before I gave up, and I just said, "F it." I, no, I almost did, almost, really, almost. But I think I'm at the point now where if I buy something that's kind of like out of my range <laughs> financially my wife might just divorce me so there's that uh -huh. that's there this is your day job you gotta yeah i you, I, you gotta invest trust in the tools. Me, i know i know i know fine me and emma will make the pilgrimage to nebraska or bi-yearly pilgrimage where we tell kayla like no no that's not, actually that's a good investment <laughs> please do um where was i so yeah, I, um, I tried yeah. to I tried to work on the stupid planer. It gave me nothing but headaches. So how'd you get it working? How'd you I get didn't. It done? I didn't. Oh, it's not working. It's not working. I got the belt and the chain on. Lo and behold, there's a chain on the other side of the planer, and it wasn't. It wasn't. How spinning. deep of a pass were you running when that thing broke? I don't know. Not too much. I don't know. Well, half inch. I'm beginning to wonder <laughs> if putting the Shelix head on that thing was a bad idea. Oh, is that because what's on all, there? Yeah, all, all these problems have arised after that was put on. And uh, I'm there's no doubt in my mind that it was put on correctly. Um, Graham, a local woodworker, put it on for me. And I have nothing but the utmost trust. I just wonder if like that, if, if it just can't tolerate that head as well as uh, people uh, think. <laughs> he said tolerate that. Anyway. Jokes. So I, I just wonder like if it adds more stress, which doesn't make any sense to me, but uh, I wonder what, what's going on. Anyway, uh, yeah, the planer didn't get fixed. I got more parts coming, so maybe it'll get fixed in a couple days. So I decided to screw it, and I got out the pressure washer, and I washed my garage doors. I pressure washed my garage doors because it's been... It's been lacking. It's needed it for a long time. The garage doors look nasty. People drive up the street and they look at the house and they're like, oh, it's right. That's the bad. garage doors that are open 95% of the day. Yeah. So day. the dust will like <clears throat> settle up on top of them and, and it just gets nasty. And it has I nothing to do with like what's visible when the garage doors are open. It's when they're closed, like, ah, oh, nobody wants to see that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, it's been nasty, and no, I get it though. My wife was like, "When hey, those doors are up, ever, they get grimy." You ever gonna wash those? And I was like, "Yeah, probably should." So. Actually, I have not thought to wash mine. Are yours white? No, they're, they're like I forget. they're maroon ish. Mar oh, I think they're okay. more purple now. They're I watched the video were, and I can't. I cannot tell you the color. They they I believe they used to be maroon, but they get my garage is south facing, so it gets sun all day long. So I think they've uh, the UV, they've UV faded over time, so now they're like purple. <laughs> I think mm -hmm. when I uh, when I uploaded the video today on Instagram Reels, I, the first comment I got was from Suman, and he said, "Are your doors made of purple heart?" <laughs> like, yeah, they are. Uh, they are. I'm yeah, busy. yeah, yeah. I'm kind of a baller. Mm, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, man, I rambled a lot there. No, I that's know, fine. That's a what's great. What's, what's on me? the bench, dude? You got anything else? Mm, nothing i want to talk about <laughs> oh yeah mm. yeah so what is up with you my friend so um 
I have had what feels like one of the busiest weeks between work and the business and just personal life and everything. I it just I I have been nothing but exhausted every single day. Yeah, like I mean, even I'm I'm trying to text you and you don't respond for. I'm like sorry, two I like days because I've literally been putting what my phone hell? into uh, shop. I have a shop mode, which is like you know when you set your phone to like sleep or whatever meditation and like there that's one that just ignores all messages except oh yeah like Emma I, and I do that emergencies actually you your calls and messages do get through you're you're on the list i just have been ignoring everyone take that um, honey. i'm on the list so the i was it all started with like last week uh so i talked a little bit about the whole tiktok shop and all that stuff and i'll get into that a little bit but uh, the weekend was going to be, you know, when you have that weekend coming up and you're like, man, I'm going to get so much work done. I'm going to get so much work done this weekend. This weekend's going to be mm -hmm. great. We have no plans this weekend except that one little teeny barbecue. That little little teeny barbecue turned into one every single day. Uh, we live in a lovely neighborhood and everyone's super friendly and we got invited to something every single night. And oh, we're like, you oh, poor thing. yeah, no, like, with... and I'm, I'm complaining bragging here 100%. But the, the problem is, I was so burnt out already from last week that I was like, I, I got started later and later. Oh, yeah, all last these week things was started. Labor day. Yeah, it. it was. It was like I was getting started later and later in the day on a weekend, and I was like, well, it's twelve thirty. Like, how much work can I get done in a shop before this three o'clock barbecue? Go out there now. It's not even like worth it. Like, I'll, I'll honestly, I'll pay more in power just to cool the place and the lights on. Just I'll just stay in the house. So didn't really get a lot done this weekend. Uh, also, just ate too much possibly drank too much just it was like a it was a fun weekend i loved it i had a great time set me way behind um did i talk about the logs last week the no. wood the logs no. so we're walking around a neighborhood last week and i see i first of all i hear the music of my people i hear chainsaws in my neighborhood and it's a small neighborhood and i'm like okay somebody's getting trees cut what's going on i can hear power tools and we we're going for a walk and happen to be there when they're on breaks so they're all like the back of the property probably eating their sandwiches or whatever and we do another lap around the neighborhood i'm like dang i like i want to see if like they can spare like two or three logs i see them sitting there on the side of the road i was like i would love some logs to just dry out have some firewood for the next season and um uh yeah <laughs> sorry dan texted me and i cannot focus i remember in the intro when i was stalling <laughs> Yeah, we'll go more into that again. Make sure we mention that. We did. He asked me about, Ma I'm just going to blow it out. He asked me about Mako Camp. I'm like, yeah, do you remember me stalling while you were Googling stuff? You're like, what well, is I Patreon? Busy. I didn't yeah, remember yeah. you saying it. Okay. So anyways, uh, I'm so long story longer. We, I finally I just drive by and, or we're walking by and I take a photo of the, the truck and the phone number and all that. I called them up and after a little conversation, I was like, yeah, I'll like, I would love like, five seven logs whatever you got like we could use it for firewood and then later that day the guy sends one of his like less english speaking guys and i was like oh that's this is great and eventually he's like oh no english i'm like oh okay cool like yeah i'll take half of this it was a full truck of logs like it was like a big dump truck not like a yeah. log truck they had that too but it's a big dump truck full of logs and then he proceeds to what start like was tipping that? it you mind was it made? I want to get to that. Okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm to sorry. That. I'm sorry. Um, and so he proceeds to like dump it, and I'm like, oh, oh, this is all for me. It was like 20 logs, if not more. That yeah, was ridiculous. It was a lot. And it like when they, I saw that video, I was like, how the hell actually are you gotta post move it. All that? it so <laughs> very sweaty. It was the hottest week, too. It's been in the 90s almost like every day. So these things get dropped. Um it, like I had to like move him a little bit. I was like, oh, move up, move up. You're going to hit the trailer. <laughs> so he did actually boop the trailer a little bit, but everything else was good. We get these logs in. I start cutting them up. Here's the thing. And I, I have been like too embarrassed to admit this on my stories, but you give me a board. I can tell you what, what it is with like an 80% certainty. You show me a log. I, all I know, it's not walnut or purple heart because it's light, whether it's oak, ash or maple. I can't tell because old Petey is dumb. So send like me I a just picture, I'll tell you what I never research honestly, like yeah, I'll, I'll send it, I'll ask you. I should just go online and be like, I love all this walnut I got. And then I'll get <laughs> yeah, the right in the Reddit in the Reddit woodwork. <laughs> yeah, separate. just to do that. Um, look at all this walnut I got. But the cool thing is like we got all this wood for free. And yes, it's a lot. It was a lot of work, but the 
like we don't heat our house with wood, but we we're avid fire pitters. That's a term, I guess. We do a lot of fire pits, um, us and our neighbors, and it's just gonna be nice to have all that wood to just chop up and dry up, so I don't have to drag it from like the woods or something. It's all right there. So and I was free. Sp- suspect that's gonna take to dry to use as firewood. Like I'm gonna start splitting it into little like um like 14 to 18 inch rounds, and I mean. Dude, honestly, you can burn wet wood once you get the fire dry. The, yeah, that's true. The dry it, it stuff, might you can pop a lot though, depending on what it is. Pop, pop. It's fine. Whatever. You know, it is what Usually it is. Usually, pine but, pops more than anything else. So but. Emma helped me out a bunch. I posted a <laughs> literally. I I named the uh, the post thirst trap dot mp4. It was just Emma carrying logs. I saw. Uh, it. I was like, yeah, you know what, Emma? Well, let's let's po- let's post this. Let's just, let's just lean, lean into, into it. it. Lean yeah. into it. Whatever. Um. But anyways, so the one thing that it was like a, a huge time and back saver was um, straps for like maneuvering logs. You can like wrap a strap around it and literally pull one side and like feed the other and you, it'll rotate the log for you. And then you can huh. also like pull them up so you're not trying to grab them with gloves because, you know, like you slip off and you grab a big log. Dan, you don't know what this is like. When you grab a big log, it's sometimes hard to grab. I no, get you're a good accurate. Grip on you're it. true. I I don't know. That's so like, I've never throwing had straps around it was a real back saver and a thing that came in the mail today. I bought a this cant hook. This is why hook. my back is so good. <laughs> I bought a cant hook from Wood Miser. Oh, I bought it from Amazon. Uh, a a cant hook is basically. Cant hook? Yeah, it's a bar with a hook at the end. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look at any Matt Cremona video where he's hanging off of a pole yeah, attached that, to a log. That thing can hook, not can. Yes, that's the weird name, right? Yeah. I don't understand that. Yeah, like. Like that can't hook can hook. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Sounds uh, like a Dr. Seuss. Terrible story. branding. That's all I'm saying. But this thing was amazing. It actually it helped move these because like we moved all the lighter stuff and it's all like this heavy heavy stuff sitting there. So we've moved thousands of pounds of of logs, and really wasn't like that. Like we still put in put in some good work, but it wasn't that bad. Highly recommend. I even today was like if you're ever moving logs, if you have a bunch on your property. Just invest in one of these things. It's like a hundred bucks and it literally will save your back. I am not aching. I'm not sore. I'm just a little tired. So highly recommend 12 out of 10. Um, aside from that, what else? Oh, we started working on the ice climbing tools uh, finally. So we got them assembled uh, a couple weeks ago. And then this week I routed them over. And once again, two. I got, I'm going to shout out two things that just made the job so easy. I got one of these like quadro bits from Freud. Usually mm. if I did a batch of a hundred of these ice climbing tools, I would have to go through about two and a half bits, mm. right? I use one bit for all 100 and that sucker's still sharp and it just melted through this wood. Yeah, I didn't start bladers. seeing, dude, it was bonkers. This thing I is have, so good. I have one of those. I oh, use a, yeah. a quad half inch uh, roundover bit yeah. that I got from them. I it's, bought that thing like two or three years ago. It's, it's like the great. same cost. It's $31 yep. on Amazon. I, I bought another, I like, I still have that one. I bought a brand new one just in case. Like, just, so I, whenever I buy it. roundover bits now, like it's going to be the quad bits from Freud. Yeah. The more. Not sponsored. Yeah, no, we're not sponsored. That thing was great. And the other thing was, and I bought not this silly. Not against it though. Hit us not up, against Freud. it. No. Hey, Freud. What's up? Uh, or Dankeschen. I don't know what, whatever. I think they're German. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> whatever uh but the other thing was nine. i made this like bungee nine and the other numbers uh this <laughs> bungee thing with like springs to essentially I saw that. my that's router. brilliant dude i would usually route over about 20 of those things and my hand would be literally seized in like a closed formation like i'd have to like stretch it apart to get my my carpal tunnel to like not be a thing anymore i did about six yeah i saw that video too dan <laughs> Stop what why do we have the same exact feed? I don't know. <laughs> but I uh like I did I think the first day I did 75 and then I did the 30 the remaining 30 the, the next day. Like I, I did triple the amount in one day without the the fatigue and pain that I was getting um before. So um Highly recommend it. Like, I'm going to try to figure out some kind of permanent solution. Not that I do these that often, but like, and people are asking me, oh, well, how come you didn't use a router table? It was super scary using it with a router table because these these tools have so many tight corners that there's so many times that the bit and there's just not a whole grab. lot of places to like. Not a whole lot to grab. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so maybe you should use push that. sticks or something. <laughs> push sticks. Yeah. Okay. So, anyway, so that's been like that. Blocks. Um, push blocks. 
Aside from that, help Keith out with some stuff. He's got a project that's coming out for the Lamello. It's cool. Keith. He actually, uh, Johnston, I think is Johnston. the name. Yeah. Johnston, KJ Sawdust. Um, so we were working on a little thing. I was lasering some uh, some medallions for him. No, not Alec. I'm not coming after your business. Medallion maker still a thing. Go get your medallions there. But no, these are little um, lasered things that are getting inserted into something. It's real sexy. You'll see it. He'll talk about it. Uh, and aside from that, I've been working, most of the week has been spent on, and I want to kind of talk about this for like a little bit, but it's Shopify and TikTok shop, TikTok shop. It's an, it's setting it up as an absolute effing nightmare. You could have bleeped yourself, you know, I just too lazy. My hands are on my head. Um, setting up TikTok shop. If you don't have, here's the thing. You can set up TikTok shop and start listing items in your TikTok shop. Fairly simple. If you want to set it up to be syncing across from another platform, like for example, Shopify, there's a lot of steps because you need to install an app on Shopify that syncs to TikTok shop and it needs to clear a bunch of stuff on Shopify to be a good listing. Then you need to go through a bunch of clearing things in, in Silk, Silk Connector is the app, to then sync to TikTok and then TikTok puts everything in review and guess what? blade is not a good word you can't use that word so saw blade anything in the description was completely flagged and taken down luckily you can like literally tweak the text or whatever it might be and it immediately lets you put it back into place um so i say it's a complete nightmare because it is a lot of work a lot of it was like reaching out to brad rodriguez like asking him how he set his up he helped me out immensely he's been a great resource uh but he's only been doing this for like a week as well a week or two weeks or something and it, it, although it was a lot of work and a lot of literally reading through articles and like the help pages for these uh, these applications, at the end of the day, I have my own Shopify website now with all of our available listings on it, uh, where I manage everything. I collect all the fees except for credit card fees, and it's my site. It's PetrieShop.com. I actually I own that domain, which I know don't, we, everyone gets domains left and right these days, but like. It feels really legit to have your own domain with your own shop on it. So that's all set up. It's working. And the TikTok shop is live. We got our first sale today. All of one sales. And TikTok's doing this weird thing. So this is something to consider when you're getting to TikTok This shop. has me concerned. Your, your uh, shop is good. Right now, my shop is showing every single item in there is either free shipping or up to 40% off. Because TikTok, just like you know, Instagram does like Reels bonuses, as does Facebook, and TikTok does some incentives or whatever. What they're doing is they're pumping money into subsidizing the shop. So the way it's supposed to work is somebody somebody bought something from me, they got like fifty percent off and free shipping. I only got paid ten dollars on this twenty dollar purchase on Shopify on Shopify's end. But apparently TikTok retains the other half that they they saved that person, and I will get that paid out through TikTok. That's at least how it works on. I paper. sure hope so. I, I mean, I'm assuming because a lot of people are doing this, but we're gonna know more in about two weeks when everything. Yeah, I'm on the Apparently, there's a here. probation period, and we did hear from a lot of people that you're waiting a lot, a long time for the TikTok shop to get approved. Um, you know, there's some people getting denied, like Dan. You got denied. Yeah, right? I was gonna go into that. Yeah, so you gotta be patient with it. There's a lot of articles and things that you got to kind of follow uh if i can assist in any way reach out to me i don't know how much help i'm going to be because i still feel like a rookie with it but it takes a lot of patience this is not a simple like one and done also the other annoying thing i'm a business account now and guess what i don't get the same music that i used to have so now i have like yeah that's a bummer license free music or whatever but i've been leaning more into the voiceover so we'll see how it is but dan you got something to say about tiktok yeah i've, I've I've been trying to set up a TikTok shop now for a couple of weeks, I think. And man, I, I don't know what their process is like. I don't, well, I don't know who's like running the back end over there or, China. or bots or what's going on, but I've applied because you got to apply to have a TikTok yep. shop. First of all, um, I've applied three times, maybe even four. I've lost track and I, I keep getting denied. I have an EIN which is an employee identification number for tax purposes and stuff like that. Uh, even though I don't have any employees, um, I have, I have all those things that I need, but they keep denying me. And they're now the message I'm getting from TikTok shop is I can't use that. I have to 
start it with my social security number and I have to upload a picture of my social security card. I am oh, not real comfortable with that. I have to do the driver's license, I believe. For my I did setup. the driver's license. I don't I don't know what's going on. I it's, I, I pretty much give up. It's a lot I'm of growing pains for a lot of people. Etsy, so. But here's the thing. Listen, uh and Dan, I I think we should set you up at the Shopify at some point too. That'd be a good move. Just to like not that like we listen, we're all we're at sea support all all for etsy but it's nice to be in multiple places oh yeah we've you know? talked about how it, it's important to di diversify in case something yeah. happens you know like a couple like what a month and a half ago two months ago maybe um i had that problem with etsy where they put my account in reserve or whatever yeah. which sucked for like a week or so but it wasn't so bad but still like if something like that happens you know if, if all my listings get reported for being drug paraphernalia and they take down yep. my shop, you know, I'm boned. Right. So yep, exactly. And, and one another other thing, last thing I'm going to mention about TikTok shop, it is just visible on your, on your page, but the way you promote it is you make posts and you tag it. And one of the reasons yeah. I went with Shopify is because I can also sync it to Etsy and do the exact same thing. Apparently it integrates with Shopify there. I haven't tried that yet. So if you have some experience, please reach out. I'd love to, to get Etsy some advice. syncs with Shopify? No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Shopify syncs with Instagram. Instagram. I'm saying all the okay. wrong words. So yeah. it I, I was confused with, there for a yeah. second. I was like, wait a minute. However, you can you so import long? your Etsy listings from Etsy into Shopify using one of their really? built-in apps. Yeah. Or even mm -hmm. you don't even have to use the app. You can literally export an SVC and drop it into uh, I'm going to be honest. I haven't really looked into Shopify yet. I've talked about it. We'll, talk about, actually, it. we'll, we'll talk about it more. I haven't uh, practiced what I preached. Yeah. All right. Well, speaking of Shopify and making things and being busy, um, should we jump into actually let's first let you want to, you want to answer the question that came yeah. in for you? Play the, play the thing though. Uh, oh, oh yeah. We'll do it. We'll do the thing. Go black Betty. Ram, ram. Ooh, ooh, All I right. So it's actually from there. Jacob green. Who's a new patron. Uh, Jacob says, hello, happy to be a patron. Thank you for joining the Matt army. Uh, I have been enjoying the show. My question is for Dan. Uh, I know you're busy with Etsy orders, but do you plan on doing more YouTube? I watched some of your videos and I thought they were good. Jacob, thank you for calling in. Uh, right. Dan? Yeah, the, thank you, Jacob. Uh, not only thank you for the question, but thank you for joining the, the Matt Army over there on Patreon. Um, obviously, the plan is always to do more YouTube. The plan is always to do more. It's just a matter of finding the time and the talent. And I say talent because I was fortunate enough to have a guy working with me for a while there where he was my cameraman and it was able, it allowed me to do a different style of video, which I really, really enjoyed doing. It was just me being my goofy self in my shop and, and doing things. And dang it, if I, if I go back to YouTube, that that's kind of the, the direction I want to go, but like, you know, I need to learn the, I need to learn to find the balance between having the time to do that and finding somebody that I trust to do the same type of quality. Because unfortunately the guy that I had not only did, not only could I, I couldn't continue to pay him because there was no like return there, but like, uh, he's actually moving. So he's not going to be around. So. Oh. It's a, it's a, it's a long convoluted answer. I think I would love to, but you know, everything has to fall into place. So we'll see. We'll see what the future holds. Dan, for some reason, I was looking at your YouTube recently, or either this morning or yesterday morning, whatever. But, <clears throat> you know, I do want to point out the fact that some of your best performing videos were ones you edited, you shot, you edited, you did yourself. Yeah, that's, that's fine and dandy, but like, you know, we've talked about this before. You yeah. got to be, you got to be true to yourself. And, you know, the, the ones that I did with Isaiah, where he was the cameraman, it was just, it felt yeah. better. I, I really was... enjoyed it more. It, yeah, it was just, it was fun. And I, that's really the direction I want to go. If I, if I continue to do YouTube, which hopefully in the future will be a thing. I have been slowly, very slowly, <laughs> uh trying to get my daughter to come out there with me and, and be the camera person and just hold it straight <laughs> she's just like that no that's just go inside she thought, she thought it was a good idea for like a day 
and then she became bored with it. You mean like, like the day that uh, you got her to run the CNC or the day you got her to pack your orders? I've never been able to oh, get her to do she... that. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I <laughs> That's never been a thing. No, no. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I sure hope so. Thank you for the kind words, Jacob. I really appreciate it. Yeah, we got We got to keep on that. What about you, though? Video. What about you? <clears throat> so uh, we're going to get into our topic. No, 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 no. Uh, you can't skip I'm that. working on it. I need to finish editing the video that I started and uh, just get that out. Because, yeah, it's just, you know, you, you got to keep building. Pete's got some fire videos out there, too. He needs to uh, They fun. are. They're like a little kindling going out like a coal. Anyways, um, why don't we jump into our topic, Dan? Okay. Pete wants our, a skirt by here. All right. Listen I'm up. working on it. I'm trying my best. <laughs> I'm trying to make you feel bad. It's working. <laughs> Appreciate it. It is working. It is working. <laughs> so this week's topic is holiday prep. Basically, in, holiday... September? in September? In September. It's September. Yeah. Three and a half months early. Actually, 3.75 months, not five months. That's it, if you're only it's... like considering Christmas. I mean, we got other holidays. If you're talking about right up to Christmas. If you're insane enough to be making stuff right up to Christmas, which I know for a fact we both have done. I've We've done literally it. been in a shop. And Christmas when I said Eve. we're not ready for it, it's because this is really the first time that we're actually going to be talking actively about like, hey, this is the stuff I got to do in the next. And hopefully it, it actually really. sinks in and I and I actually do well this year. That'd be yeah. So we're going to kind of like, I'll we're going to go down this list, but just kind of rattle off random things about stuff. And I mean, the first one is really, really just actually, I'll talk about the first like three, which, which the first one is plan ahead. Like we're planning ahead right now. You don't want to be making I mean, last making minute gifts. Podcast in September about this. That's playing yeah. ahead, right? You don't want to be making gifts in September. I'm sorry, in November for Christmas. If you're starting in November, you're done. You done goofed. Would you agree, Dan? Well, well. I mean, you still can, I think if but you, not if you start, start. If you're starting like post Thanksgiving, I think you're kind of in a bind. But yeah, if you're starting like in All the right, beginning of November, November I, you okay. might be okay. But you know yeah, the early, here's the thing. You're going to be okay. I started stuff as late as mid-November. And unfortunately, those are the times that I, I kind of ran late. I ran into like right up, up till Christmas. But yeah, the holidays aren't just Christmas. I mean, it's Halloween. It's Thanksgiving. Those those are holidays that we have in the fall sort of. That's number that six, whole... Dan. You're jumping a gun. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I'll allow it. <laughs> But right now, I'm kind of thinking about making products that are fall themed. So yep. that's kind of where my head is at. I'm going to start thinking about Christmas probably the second week in November. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm going to try to get ahead of it. But but you're, you're right. No, and I'm planning ahead. That's actually number six, which was the whole like, think about the other holidays because there's there is Thanksgiving. Halloween is huge. And I feel like every year it's becoming more and more of like... Oh. Like it's literally fall the holiday. <laughs> I mean, a walk through Menards will tell you how big uh, Halloween is getting. I mean, if you go to Costco right now, it's Christmas already. It's insane. It's been there since August. Menards has this thirty or forty foot tall. I swear to God, skeleton. It's like a skeleton <sighs> or a vampire thing that like growls at you when you walk by it. Uh, if I wanted I that, mean, I would just go to my mother-in-law's house. I, I know mean, how I big Halloween gets because Joe. every year that, that <laughs> decoration gets bigger. Yeah, right? They just keep adding adding feet every year. So like next year, you got you know, to buy the new one. You can't, you can't have the 20-foot skeleton. So don't discount Halloween, folks. Uh, you could do Halloween and then just roll it into like a fall theme. I mean, you know it's what? a pretty easy transition. Think about the, you know, like Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, some of the other holidays. If you, you know... If you want get into that field, because the market's not as saturated too, you know. True, uh, true. That? Ash Ash Wednesday is in that. So no, that's later in the year. I don't know. You whatever. Could, All Saints Day. If you got a lay, if you could turn a dreidel. Dreidel, <laughs> dreidel, dreidel. I made you out of uh, leftover pine. Leftover pine. <laughs> that doesn't sound as good. So the next one's obviously you, you know you want to set clear goals and priorities that you want to focus on so sit down and kind of plan stuff out of like what is some of the stuff that you'd want to make this year look i've i've said this before in the past i'm not a goal setter 
that's not what I do. But I kind of do do that, do do. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> uh, I, I kind of do do that for the holidays because, yeah. look, I'm going to make probably 25% of all the all the money that I make comes from the holiday season, the yeah. the last like two months of the year. Two months that makes four months or six months worth of money, potentially. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, it's a big deal. I mean, people are open, are more willing to open up their pocketbooks. So you got to really uh, cast a wide net to, to catch those fish. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. So you want to plan ahead, uh, write out some priorities and things you might want to tackle this year. Now, one of the things that this is, this was especially crucial for me the last two years. Uh, and I love this one. It's notify your friends and family and, and plan around the holidays that they have planned. Because uh, I love that, like that, what was like a TikTok sound going around last year that was like, just a heads up. If you want to see your friends for the next couple of years, you better learn how to, uh, how to like pack an order, uh, wrap a gift or like <laughs> right. print a shipping label or whatever, because oh, you want to hang out. Yeah. Come over to my yeah, shop. No, come over. We got to pack 30 orders. Like that's, <laughs> it's kind of the reality, like notify your friends and family. It's going to be really hard for you to get away. If they respect your business, uh, if they're the, how's your little blank going, they're not the friends that oh, are going to respect that boundary. But when someone's like, Oh damn, like you're ready for the holidays. Like, are you, are you making stuff for the holidays? Be like, yeah. And I'm going to be a little busy and I apologize ahead of time. If you guys want to hang out, would love to see you, uh, but I might put you to work. Ha ha ha. Laughing, Ooh. laughing. And they're like, yeah, sure. <clears throat> All I ask for my friends and family is that they give me like a minimum of a two week notice. Really? I need a notice. You can't and then have me... Kayla put it on a calendar. So. Yes, absolutely. Yes, put it on a calendar. Emma runs my forget. calendar. That's the same. Um, <laughs> yeah. If you call me day of, I've had friends and family do this, call me a day of or like two days before or something and say, Hey, I'm doing this thing. You want to come, come and hang out. I'm like, bro, I can't, you gotta, yeah. I really need more. I really need more notice. It's just and, not going to happen. And that's just, I appreciate generally... you thinking of me, but I can't. It, like, listen, this is generally like good life advice for the holidays. So like, not all of these are going to be like make, you know, sh making stuff for the shop specific, but like just set boundaries and set some goals. And honestly, one of the things that freed me up the most the last, I'd say about two years is I told myself, what's the thing I missed the most about Christmas or the holiday season is like being off and like watching TV with no responsibility playing video games, hanging out with my friends, just, just like chilling and sleeping in eggnog. And you don't want to be because <clears throat> I've done this. I've actually, I've run over Christmas and I was delivering gifts to people between Christmas and new year's so that they could give it to them, uh, to their whoever. Yeah. when they saw them at the, I mean, you know, cause some people do Christmas with friends like post new year's. And here's the thing. If, <laughs> if you care at all about your customer service or, you know, your rating on Etsy, uh, you're going to want to get that delivered before Christmas. So people yeah. aren't waiting and you know, that's just, yeah. that's just not a good look for you at all. Trust me. I know I've been there. It sucks. Well have, which brings me to my next one is deadlines set deadlines, like absolute, like in set in stone deadlines and, uh, plan this out. Like you should not be, here's the thing. This is September. It's beginning of September. By the time you get home from Maker Camp, because we're all going, right? Everyone listening is going we're to Maker Camp. Going. We're all going. By the time you get back from Maker Camp, if someone's like, hey, I uh, I was hoping you could build something, just straight up look them dead in the eyes and go, January. Mm -hmm. January. Like, yeah. oh, no, but it's just like a cutting board. Like, okay, I can maybe work it into my schedule. Let's talk. Maybe if, if you pick like, one of the ones I already have made. Yeah, or that. or that. But like, if someone wants something custom and you are, you're expecting to be busy, set boundaries i can't tell you how many times i've screwed myself by saying yes Man, to everything i'll tell you what every year it seems like that happens i'll get somebody email me or message me in mid-november and say hey i want this for christmas <laughs> i gotta be like no yep. i'm sorry i would really love to do it for you but it's not i'm not gonna be able to get to it till february at least yep because like, listen end of october turns into cyber monday real fast real fast yeah like like november is a no-go month for anyone that works in a shop <laughs> it just disappears and, and you know and, and the more i do this the more you do it probably the busier you get it, things mm -hmm. don't just slow down 
you know, the more you do it, the more word gets out that you do this thing and, and you get busier and busier. It's just, it's just not possible. And most of us, well, actually, no, I'm, I'm kind of speculating here, but I feel like a lot of us are in my camp of like full-time job and uh, business on a side, right? So like, you're already busy. Don't kill yourself the time of the year that you're supposed to rest and enjoy your family and friends. Unless you want to avoid your family and friends. I totally get it too. Sometimes, you know, I get a lot. Dan's a lot. Uh, you know, you might want to get away, but I think set my those family deadlines. just wants to avoid me. Yeah. And, and so the way I look at it is set a hard deadline for yourself so that if anyone hits you up after that deadline, um, seriously have a conversation with them about whether or not that product can be made. If it's something obviously on your website and you provide a certain uh, uh, turnaround time, especially on Etsy too, like if it's a two week thing or whatever, you might also want to consider adjusting that so that it's, you know, it's reflecting realistic times. I 100% do that. Come, exactly. Yeah. As soon as October's done, I'm adjusting uh, delivery times on Etsy. Yep. I think right now it's at three to five days and I'm going to adjust it to seven to 10. Yeah, <clears throat> just so absolutely. people have a an expectation, you know, that's realistic. And find out what's comfortable for you. Like maybe for you, it's going to be like you're already busy and you can't even imagine having double or triple the orders. Maybe you start setting a deadline now. Be like, hey, listen, I've I've seen people that take not a single custom commission aside from personalization from like September till the end of the year. They are in a uh, holiday season mode. Also. I cannot recommend this enough. Take a week or two off from the shop. Now, I'm not saying get out of the shop completely. I did this last year. I remember Mike yelled at me. He's like, I can't, I can't even be like out of the shop. I'm like, no, 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 it's not that. I just don't want to like work for someone. I just want to go in there and play. I want to have fun. I want to clean up. I want to just like watch, watch sports you don't wanna, ball. You don't want to dread going in there. Yeah. I don't want to think of like yeah. work when I'm going in there. I want to go in there. Cause like, I want to just do some dovetails. You know, right. I want to join some MDF and OSB. Like, let's go, you know, that's a, <laughs> so, that's a, that's a fine line to balance. I mean, especially if you're trying to make something of your hobby, if you're trying to turn it into a hustle or a side gig or even a full-time job, if you're trying to turn it into that, that's a really fine line to, to balance. I'm, I mean, yeah, you want it, it, to, it's, it's what you do for fun, but you know, if you want it to to be successful and you want it to work and you want it to pay for itself you, you got to find time to put in the work so it's it's tough especially around the holiday season yeah absolutely all right dan next one is uh i'm gonna go into stock up on materials yes this is yours i want you to talk about that well last year i i ran out of uh wood several times i feel like and uh, it is, it's not just you that, that's stocking up for stuff. I mean, everybody across the board is stocking up for stuff. So like your lumber yard might not have the things that you need when you need them because everybody else is in a rush to get the things that they need. So I ran into a situation last year where I needed uh, Paduk or Zebrawood or something. I, I knew it was one of the exotics. I can't remember exactly, but my lumber yard didn't have it because I wasn't the only guy that needed it in Omaha. Yep. There were other people obviously. And, uh, where they, where my lumber yard gets it from, obviously that's not a local wood. Uh, they didn't have any. So like I was, I was kind of screwed and I had to message all my clients and say, or all my customers and say, look, I'm sorry, I, I can't fulfill this order. Will you take something else? Or I'll just refund your money. That's not a good feeling. And it was all, it all came down to because I wasn't as prepared as I should have been. Right. Have you ever run into yeah. that? I mean, Oh, absolutely. That's something uh, that I'm going to keep an eye on this year. Definitely. The other thing, just cause I have little, like little lady hands. No, there's some badass ladies out there. I have little, like just delicate hands. Carney I work, hands. I work, I work, I have Barney hands. They're like mittens. No, Carney hands, small hands. Oh, oh, like I was, oh Carney, uh, Carney's, I just assume they're missing fingers and teeth. But, but like, it's an I, Austin Powers reference. Come on. Oh, is it? Okay. Well, yeah, listen, I, I work cabbage. in front of a computer all day. I type my fingers are oh, delicate. Come on. Somebody you know out there. What sucks it. really hard going to a lumber yard in the middle of winter or in November when it's oh, cold yeah, and yeah, raining. Yeah. But when, as soon as you get 
it gets cold out, wood just becomes heavier and more aggressive. Like your, your hands are dry. And like, if you're going there picking through lumber, like you're better off just having it at your house already. The stuff that you really want that you know, it needs to acclimate. It needs to acclimate. And like, you don't want to be buying stuff like early December for like last minute gifts. That, that that would be a big deal if your lumber yard stores all their lumber outside. Luckily, my lumber yard uh, stores most everything of the ones inside, around me so. do. Or really? it's like you can't really even call it indoors. Like it's an indoor place. There's a, like this is everything is there's in a, a giant sixty building, foot door so. that's like open all day. Like that's basically <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's outdoors, guys. Come on. <laughs> well, it's not it's not getting rained on or anything. Or no, snowing, it's right? not getting rained on. Uh, but like it's definitely that's not somewhat helpful. Yeah, it's like I, I say like. Down going to lumber yards in the winter sucks especially like january february whatever but that's later in the year like just get stock up on whatever you can early on yeah and um, not just not just lumber though i mean or any materials you use but like stock up on consumables like yeah. glue and sandpaper and oh, God, uh, I'm out of sandpaper right rubber now. gloves right. or whatever else you need that you use a lot of that you don't even realize I'll use stuff all the time and I don't even realize that I use it as much as I do until somebody comes over and they're like, why wow, you go through that? You go through a lot of that? Like bits. I go through CNC bits like crazy. And I have people all the time, hey, have you tried such and such? Yeah, I've tried them all, man. I just, I run a lot. Yeah. I run my <laughs> CNC a lot. So I go through bits. I, I probably go through tens of bits a month. Well, I'm thinking like half a dozen bits a week. I mean, it's probably Whoa. not as much as like some people, but like it, it's up there. It's up there. I mean, it's just you're, cost you're running that thing 24 seven, basically. Well, I'm not doing it 24 seven, well, but it's it, eight hours a day at least. Yeah. Eight, so, eight, eight, five. And it's two CNCs <laughs> that I'm running these days. So yeah, I'm, I'm doing, yeah. Eight bits a, a week, eight, 10 bits a week, something like that, whatever. Which, so jump, it adds up. It definitely does, but I mean, it's it's worked into the it's cost. It's consumable, the, though. Exactly at this point. Yeah. So working that into our next one, which is uh, figuring out your shipping and fulfillment, and especially your packaging. So stocking up on packaging material yes. is essential. I can't tell you guys how many times, especially, yes. you know, this obviously is a one-off with COVID. There was like a lot of uh, issues with getting materials, but I like I I had to rethink my box selection because I couldn't get boxes that I usually use, and even now, some of the boxes that were very popular. I can't get at the same price anymore. So I'm having to buy them either custom through Uline or not custom, but like, you know, it's full price, you could say from Uline. And oh, actually, I will call this out. Uline is having for the next two weeks, uh, I forget when, when it starts. I think it starts on the 11th. Uh, they're on having September? the, yes, free over $500 shipping. And that so, sounds like a lot, but if you're shipping out a bunch. Oh, yeah, no. I mean, $500 that's a, is like that's a huge saving. You get like, I don't know, eight bundles of uh, of uh, boxes and like some peanuts and whatever. Like, it's, it could, that could, $500 goes real fast at Uline. It does. You know, and if you're buying in bulk, like, that's a good place to, to get your supplies. I still get them from Amazon and some staples and some from Uline. I order from Uline probably mm -hmm. once every 18 I, months. I brought this up in the pre-show, I think last week or the week before, and I've been talking about Timu, and I know there's a lot of negative uh, uh, reviews. You're taking or our added... data. I know there's a lot of negativity about about Timu out there, and, and you know it's it's probably fair, but I've been getting all my packaging through Timu. Now, if you're doing that, you have to absolutely plan ahead because it takes about two weeks for it to get to you. Because it is coming from China. I've heard some stuff However, that takes longer. It is about one fifth the price of Uline. Now, is the quality the same? No. But when you're ordering it in I'm glad bulk, you asked. No. <laughs> when you're ordering ordering packaging in bulk and you're spending a lot of money on on packaging, you you need to find ways to up. save money. And that's just one of the ways that I, I'm finding. And it, it, it works. It's not bad. I mean, these are all Timu packages over here. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. It, that's that's something to look at. Costs, so just, it costs a lot. If like you're every, willing to gamble, which I am. <laughs> I, I'm not I a gambling man, but I put money down and sometimes I'll win it. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, I, I totally agree. You got to stock up on your supplies and, and, and this going back to consumables again, okay? cause like, you know, it could be tape. It could be uh poly mailers, which is something you think like, Oh, I could get it at any time. Guess what? You might not be able to get the not same the exact size. That I need. And especially like if you have, if you have your processes set up uh, and we'll kind of get into that. Like if let's say you, you need to have four by six uh, plastic bags to put your thing in, but now suddenly the bags you're getting are some other one and it's like three and a half inches by five and a half and you're screwed. Now your item doesn't fit. Now you need a different bag. And now it's poor presentation because you're having to use a six by eight bag and it's all loose in there. So there's all these little things that you can run into that might make your product look bad or a different wrapping paper or whatever. So definitely want to think ahead and order ahead. And it could be a very hard pill to swallow with a deep investment because you could be dropping hundreds of dollars on packing material before you even sold a thing. Uh, but it's something that I would consider, you know, granted, you don't need to go the U-line route, but get something. Obviously, this this only applies to people that sell stuff online or online. Or yes. Like. If you're selling local, unless you, you have some you kind of presentation or gift yeah. box situation. Uh, and then the other thing is, too, like, you know, one thing that's been very successful for me is buy or make products almost based on the boxes that you can easily get. Or the packaging really? that you can easily get. That's Sometimes I'll just make an about in the past. I yeah, mean, we've brought this up many times. I have this like box that I can get that's like eight in, or like nine inches wide or whatever. So I can make these like little mini boards out of all these offcuts super easily, and they're always un under a certain size. And the same thing for the bigger ones; they got to be under twelve inches, which is perfect because my planer is that. But um, you know, you kind of want to plan ahead. So make your material for the box or your bot get your boxes for the material. Uh, but you can save yourself a lot of money if you can find a quirky, weird size and then make something that fits that. Uh, and then of course, think about the shipping, like think about what your shipping is going to be like, think about the last and, and um, UPS, USPS, FedEx, DHL, all of them release their holiday shipping schedules. So you can figure out exactly if I ship this day with this type of shipping, it's guaranteed to get there by Christmas. And then they have like a grace period of like, it might, you know? So you do want to consider that. And not, not only their schedules, but maybe they, they often change their pricing too. So oh yeah, the holiday inflation. And it's something that Pete brought up a couple weeks ago that he stumbled upon that the USPS, mm. and, and I'm sure, uh, I'm sure UPS and FedEx and everybody else does it too, but you you usps has an, an additional charge for anything over like a certain size so yeah it was 22 inches apparently that's the longest a, a standard ground package could be if it's 22 and a half it immediately added this like massive bulk charge to it maybe it wasn't massive but it was big it was enough. like 12 bucks or something like it was something that, right? like significant where i was like upset <laughs> you know i mean and i was gonna, like well, if you're gonna the, sell, sell a lot of packages in that range yeah. Maybe, maybe think about scaling it down just yeah. a little bit. So you don't, you don't get that. Extra We're not saying charge. lie. We say embellish the truth. <laughs> no, I'm talking about scale down your pack, your product. Oh, a little bit okay, so yeah. it fits into a package that. But if it's 22 and a quarter, maybe 22. Uh, and playing around with it. It's, the nice thing with like, we use pirate ship. So that's easy to like, oh, that's what that costs. That seems steeper than usual and go back and then check something else. Like check maybe the size that you're doing or the weight uh because the weight too it goes by ounces and then by pounds for the pricing so it goes uh, up to four ounces is a certain price and as soon as you hit 4.1 ounces it's a new tier so like yep. there's different tiers per ounces and and uh pounds so keep that in mind to do your research and if uh if i can be of help with that just reach out to me i'll see if i can guide you along the way um next one is well i guess research trends that's so, that's that is important i think i mean very important like what's hot this yearly this year right yeah yes. is it you know is it like the is the covid toilet paper ornament still going to be hot this year you know probably not <laughs> probably not that's very 2020 so uh you know etsy does a good job of this they'll literally send out emails where like hey this is like this is what everyone wants it's things it's that are silver it's also Whatever. a simple <laughs> google search these days yeah. i mean you could just google what's trending in this in this category yep. right now and like a hundred websites will come up and, and tell you because exactly look at top on board selling that. on amazon uh you can use like e-rank i think is one of those websites where you can like actually research or compare trends like see what's the hot 
thing that people are searching for on Etsy, for example, if you're doing a lot of handmade stuff. Um, there's also uh, Ask the Public, which is, this is more of like a content creator thing, but you can use it for leveraging, like figuring out what, what you want to sell. Ask the Public is a website where I think there's a free version and there's a paid version. You can put in like holiday decor and you see what the top Google searches are. So basically the questions that people are asking and you can answer the public. So like, it's great for content creators because you'd be like, oh, some of you are wondering how to blah, 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 you know, but you can see mm-hmm. what people are researching and uh, use that. Um, I haven't used that for product. I've used that for content. So that's one way to do it. And I'm going to give a shout out to Andy Bird over yeah. on YouTube. Oh yeah, he just Andy dropped Bird that video. Builds. He just dropped a video talking about his uh his top 10 things to make this holiday season that are trending i think i probably butchered that title but go give it a go give it a look uh it's a really great video i watched it and i was like oh i'm actually gonna try to do several of those things so go go check that out yeah definitely check that out um and we're gonna try to we're we're gonna see we're gonna i'm gonna reach out we've talked to we've talked to we're gonna try to get him on yeah because he'd be a a really good resource absolutely Um, one other thing that we have here, we kind of talked about this already, is set up your processes. And I'm going to kind of uh, bundle this up with um, planning out batching of items. So yes. there might be something, you might be able to get a product 75% of the way there and do it in bulk and do it in one weekend and have blanks ready and sitting before customization or finish, or maybe it's a different front on it or whatever it might be. Uh, But try to plan out as many processes as you can. And it's for me, it's not natural to sit down and try to plan something that's in the future. It's absolutely not natural. Like I just do not think about it that way. But the more I've been working with Emma is like we that's how she thinks and it's actually getting me more organized because i tend to be just like show up and i'll figure it out yeah like no yeah. that's not how this works man you gotta plan this out <laughs> so well, i used to uh i used to open up my etsy store every morning and just kind of make things or pull from uh etsy itself like straight down what what, what needed to go out uh soonest versus latest and i would just go top down and and make things that way and that was inefficient <laughs> af because it wasn't always the same thing you know i was bouncing around all over the place i was making a, a makita 10 inch saw zci i was making a saw stop next i was making a delta next and i was going back to makita it, it was just like a mess so i developed a really quick and simple spreadsheet where i have all the items that i make and i'll i'll print it out every morning hard copy and I'll go through my Etsy store and I'll just make a mark by all the things that I need to make. That way I have a, like a visual representation of all the things that I need to make and I can batch them out. I'll do all the Makitas and then I'll do all the DeWalt's and then I'll do all the Bosch's then I'll do all the saw stops. And that is way more efficient. And it's, it's, it's a better, like not representation, but it, 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 it just serves me way better because it allows me to uh uh what's the word i'm looking for pete what are the words i don't know it allows me to keep better track of my time plan out plan ahead if you will there was a there's a word in there i don't know i don't know but you know you know what i'm saying yeah exactly so yeah yeah, i've been doing that for mm, five six months now and it's 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 fantastic it's helped me tremendously just that simple little thing Plan it out. Absolutely. Now, Dan, what, do, yeah. like, how do we get the word out though? Like, well, you know, so you, you're making all this stuff. Like how, how are people going to know about this? Flyers, Post flyers notes. are huge. Post notes on yeah. telephone poles. Yeah. You want to do one of those works. tear offs and then you want a whole website with a bunch of things at the end that people have to type in, yeah. or you can leverage social media. I know it seems kind of hey. simple because we're all on social media, but leverage social media and online marketing. I can't tell you how many times some a family member or somebody was like, oh, I wanted you to make it, whatever, but I, I didn't want to bother you. Or I just ordered this because I, I didn't, I, you seem busy. Like just tell people, hey, I'm open to some orders. I'm doing custom stuff. If you want one of these, if you're local, specify if you're local or your friends or family, whatever, let me know. I can get these out to you guys this week. I'm working on this, blah, blah, blah. And like, but you've got to get that. your order in like now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't and wait you wanna, for the last minute. 
And I say also online marketing, because if you have a website established already, you probably have a, a mailing list. You might be able to reach out to some of these people and tell them like, hey, we're doing a sale, we're taking orders or our cutoff is by this date. Sometimes the urgency of like last order is November 28th, you know, and people are going to like, you know, I'm just going to rush and get this thing out. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so think about that. You do want to try to leverage your social media and do some videos about your products because you know what? I'm super guilty. Like Dan does videos of ZCIs and bow ties all day. I do like one video every two months of a 3D printed product I make. So people legitimately don't know I make this stuff. They forget. Oh, they yeah, forget. He he's the 3D. Oh, he's guy. the. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he's not just yeah. Polish. Well, he's I cool. leverage uh, the the advertisements right through Etsy. So I'll pay for you know what is that the cost per click? Yeah, I just they call it. put mine down because it wasn't paying off for me. Yeah, I'm I'm paying a lot of money. So, but it, it's it's worth it for me. I don't yeah. you know your mileage may vary. So I do that <clears throat> and. Uh, Speaking of Etsy, they do, uh, you know, they have a, an abandoned cart email they'll sh send out for you. It's a real simple setup. You set it up once, once and done. It's it's a beautiful thing. And I'm pretty sure, I, you know, I'm, I can't verify it, but I, I'll bet anything that like Shopify and any of the other they like, do. big selling they do. platforms. Yeah. So that was actually, sort of that's thing. the next thing. It's not just abandoned cart email, but also thank you email, uh, emails thank and coupons. You. I Which always add I always add business cards to my orders that say thank you. Here's how you can get 10% off your next order with mm -hmm. a a QR code on the back. You can't see it because it's blown out, but you know, I I try to listening, help people. Dan. They can't see it cuz they're listening. I try to help people <laughs> come back to my store as easily as possible. And yep. I try to let them know that I'm grateful for their patronage and uh, just if anyone's confused uh, an abandoned cart or thank you coupon is basically um etsy and shopify some of the other sites if someone starts going through the setup and they they're logged in to either etsy or even to the website because shopify is kind of a standard thing like they if you've bought anything on any shopify site it remembers your username roughly and it's gonna say like you know it, it'll capture your email and you'll get an email saying like hey um, we noticed you didn't check out. If you want to check out, here's another 10%. Yeah. There's a little like incentive to come back or they buy something from you. I can't tell you how many times somebody's used a thank you coupon. That's right on the oh, receipt that I give them little or the cards, cards that Dan does. Yeah. Off. They'll come back and they'll, you know, you just give them 10%, something you can absorb, <clears throat> uh, or 20, whatever you, maybe you want to like really treat them and it, they, they work. They definitely work. I highly yeah, recommend absolutely. them. Absolutely. Those cards absolutely. have been great. Um, uh, what they're, they cost me like $35 for 250 of them through mm -hmm. Canva. And I have literally, I, I could pull up the number, but I think it's somewhere in the neighborhood of like 200 people have used them. That's awesome. It's crazy. It's yeah. crazy. And another great incentive for, especially as you get into the holidays, obviously personalization is big all year round, but especially when you get into like ornaments and, you know, Christmas and whatnot, name personalization or family or you know our for baby's first christmas stuff like that could be huge so personalization and uh little touches like holiday wrapping or like gift wrapping as an option because people tend to shop especially last minute for items that they can then ship directly to a person and they can open it up so they want a little note in there and etsy has the gift not gift wrapping, but like a marked as gift, gift receipt, mark as gift. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, it prints a different packing slip. It's got a little like bow on it, but like, it's not super personal. Um, and you know, usually when that happens, I try to throw something extra in there, but gift wrapping could be huge. If you offer gift wrapping, some people I've even seen like on Etsy, they'll literally offer it as like a separate listing that you can add on. So like a $5 gift wrapping and it'll be wrapped packaged. So it's ready to go to the person that's going out to. So it's something That's to consider. Smart. Never thought. Yeah, of that. and personalization could you know could be anything from different colors uh, to fully engraving with laser or hand burning a name in there or something like that. So there's a lot of options. A lot of options to to get your customers to retain your customers or get them to come back. Um, mm -hmm. let's see what's next. Oh, stocking up on. So we talked about stocking up on supplies, but I talked about taking the last couple of weeks off or at least winding the work down, there's always going to be somebody that's going to hit you up last minute. Be like, Hey, I saw you making cutting boards. Do you have any cutting boards left? Or like, Hey, do you have any ornaments left? I really wanted to get an ornament stock yes. up on things that are selling well 
and keep them on on hand so yeah. that when people are hitting you up last minute you can just be like yeah like i have come, items come in my laboratory i have items that sell a lot um so if when I make them, I always make extra because I know they're going to sell eventually. It's not going to hurt me to have a few on hand. So, I mean, it's a lot easier to make something if you're already making that thing to just make a, another one. Yep. So that's, that's great advice. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, as you get closer to the holidays, I, I touched on this already, but it's self-care. Don't burn out. This, this season can make or break you. I've literally been like almost in tears like broken down around the holidays because i was so stressed and couldn't catch up no matter what i did and was so stressed i wasn't enjoying the holidays do yeah. not do not Same. burn out enjoy this time with your family with <clears throat> your friends enjoy the holidays you're doing this to create a better life for yourself none of us are doing this because we just enjoy it we enjoy it and we want to make a living doing it so right. that we can be happy so why make yourself miserable Last year, I think if you go back and listen at some of the episodes, I was stressing pretty hard because I was working right up until, quote unquote, the buzzer, like mm -hmm. uh, Christmas Eve, and it was crazy stressful. So this year, you know, Pete and I were talking and we're like, let's do a holiday prep episode in September so that we are ready mentally. I mean, it's a, it's a great idea to Just putting it out there. Just get prepared and, and uh, you know, that way you have time to spend with your family and, and not stress about it and enjoy the holidays. Yeah, because we definitely come back from Maker Camp. There's like a week of like haze and getting back into things. And then you're like, oh, God, it's November. Like, I need yeah. to like make stuff, you know? Yeah, before you know it, before you know it, it's going to be 2024 and we're going to be talking about spring weather. And Dan, what's the best thing to do? when it's 2024 and it's after the holiday season what should people do then start making easter things well, i don't know yeah, what that, did you want me to say oh oh i sent you the list i thought you were reading it too oh, but no i wasn't you texted oh, me oh i texted you the whole list i thought you were going off of it because you're kind of following it along just no talking. I'm, just, I'm just i guess i'm just I'm that good at guiding the conversation but it's it's <clears> if, oh dan are you ready or should i just oh, say yeah, it? Yeah, yeah i got it i got it so dan what Look, should people do after christmas Yo, sit down and take a moment to evaluate everything. How did you do? How did you expect to do? Just evaluate your performance, evaluate your business. Take a look at all the data, uh, try to compile a list and maybe come up with a plan for next year and, and think about what you can improve <laughs> where. Absolutely, evaluate your performance, see what worked. Take a notebook, write it down, make a note in your phone, whatever, just something that you will remember. Um, or if you have leftover, like every year I have some like leftover ornaments, ornament blanks without like any personalization, no date, nothing. 75% off. I'll throw something, but you can do, honestly, I was selling ornaments all the way through January. It was crazy. People were still buying them up late and, and they wanted last year's date on it. It was 2022 on it, but throw even a note into a bin of that stuff for next year, like. Put it in there just so you remember what worked, what didn't work. Like, you know, that one didn't sell at all. This one I made a ton of, I thought it was going to be great. It wasn't like, think about this kind of stuff uh, and, and save yourself the headache. You know, we talked about what are the trends? What are what? Like, guess what? You already have the trends from last year. You did your own research. You know what works. You know, figure, it, you, you could write down, buy more six by three by three boxes because you're going to run out in October and then not be able to get it. So it's definitely worth uh, keeping some notes in, in case you do want to keep doing this every year, you know, and stay efficient. Amen. That. Amen. Uh, Dan, <clears throat> you have any uh, follow up ones? Because that's kind of our list. That's, we had like 15, uh, we talked about like 30 things. No, man, I think we nailed everything we wanted to talk about. I mean, we came into this thinking about we were only going to talk about 10 things, but I feel like we rattled off. I kept a like, bunch. as I was writing, I had like six and then before I knew it, I had 12 and then we try to like add some more, like really fluff it up. Cause there's, this is all important. Basically it's have a good time, have a plan, have fun. And That's, look, there's three things you're going to do. We're not, we're not doing this episode to stress you out. We're doing this episode to help you out. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully this, this stuff helps you out. If you're, if you're like us, we assume that you're like us in a sense because you're listening to this. Sexy, compassionate, <clears throat> generous lover. Yes. Yeah. 
you're like us and you're trying to make things and sell them, uh, hopefully this helps you out. And hopefully yeah. you get through the holiday season and uh, you come out a winner. And you, and you look forward to the next one. Guys, let's make a lot of money this year and not be stressed out. Let's Hell make yeah. money and then just like chill to the moon last week to the moon yeah that's you know what else is to the moon dan our patrons yeah did uh, well i don't that, know <laughs> did we do that right what we i don't know i don't know I mean, we're not quite fully done yet but oh what i do want to talk about again is uh I, I guess we should do another code for the actual episode right oh yeah yeah so since we partnered up with maker camp we're going to be giving away two silver passes for maker camp the silver pass comes with an entire weekend of activities it's all hands-on you're able to touch all the things including dan and i with consent thank you and uh you're able to do all the you know participate in all the fun activities stay the entire weekend including a camping pass so if you wanted to roll in with a tent you can absolutely do that as well uh, get your spot for the for the weekend Exactly. And uh, we're going to be giving away one of the epi- uh, one, one of the episodes, one of the uh, tickets on the episode uh, that is on the 17th. I think I said this earlier. The 21st. A 21st. Sorry. 21st. So that's in two weeks. We're going to be giving away uh, that first ticket, the other ticket on and the same may day. I, may I say, uh-huh. we're going to give that ticket out during the pre-show. The pre-show. Yes. And we'll announce it during the show as well. So you want to be there live. And now we are giving a code away in the pre-show, a different one in the episode for the next two weeks. So you want to make sure you're there, including on the 21st, we're going to have a special last minute code. If you want to be in there get an extra entry. Absolutely. That's the way to do it. And then the second one is going to be done through Instagram on our page. So stay tuned. Uh, if you're listening to this, the post will hopefully be up by then. Uh, and we're, we couldn't thank, uh, you know, maker camp enough. We love that. That's why we reached out to them because it's literally one of our favorite events. Actually it's their favorite event. It's the, it's the one. Yeah. Like workbench going to fine, but like, we love this one. <laughs> we love, love going maker to camp. maker camp so much. <laughs> so, uh, we're excited to partner up with them and we're excited to see you guys all there and we get to see an extra two of you, which is super exciting. So, um, again, more details to follow, but Dan, do you have a secret catchphrase for this or code phrase? Uh, let's just make it, make it real simple. Let's just call it a holiday prep. Holiday prep. So you need to send that to yep. us in an email at AWP giveaway dot. Nope. <laughs> One more time. AWP giveaway. You need to send that to us in an email at AWP giveaway at gmail.com. The, the phrase you need to send is holiday prep. That'll get you entered into the drawing for the maker camp ticket. Now, I love it. You, you enter this week. You can also enter next week, but you can only do once per week. Unless you're in the pre-show, you could do two. You could double the two a week. You can double up, or you can also uh, enter on our post that we're going to be promoting. So that's check, right. check, uh, follow, follow another Witch Out podcast. I think we make that post on Instagram live on Sunday. When I will do my best. Yes. Well, just tell me what you want, and I'll do it. Make it real sexy. I uh, okay. Like like a grizzly so bear in the woods. Feet? No. Oh. Okay. No, there'll be. Plenty of barefoot forge there. Ha ha ha. See what it's a joke. All right. Um, but we're super excited. So uh Dan. I want to give another shout out to our lovely patrons. Thank you very much for helping us keep the lights on around here. We appreciate you guys. And if you want to join the Met Army, you can join us on patreon.com slash another woodshop podcast. We have Several tiers over there you can join up. Four, if you uh, say. If you, if yeah, you I count. there's four. Four. Anything helps. Even sharing the show. We really appreciate that, too. Uh, every little bit helps. Thank you. That, that's, that's, it. Very, that's, that's it. That's all I got. That's it. That's, that's awesome. Guys, thank you for joining us next week. Uh, do we have a guest for next week? Actually... Did, did we talk about a guest? We're no. going to let you guys know by Sunday night or Monday or whatever. <laughs> we may have a guest next week. We may have a guest next right week. now. But actually, on the 21st, you know who's going to be joining us officially? Oh, oh is that Josh like... Tescott of <gasps> Tescott Design Co. 
I am excited yeah. because I've been I'm following Josh sorry. for a very long time and he's such a nice guy and he just opened up his own brick and mortar store. So I Oh, did he really? No way. Oh. Well, I think he's working on it. He's been working on it. He's been, Okay. All right. Sorry. Uh, uh, working on the building. He's he's close. That's dope. So, and we're going to be that's cool. tr- we're going to try to bring on a couple of uh makers and and creators on here that are kind of doing a lot of this holiday prep as well to try to get us psyched up for it as we're getting closer to the holidays. So stay tuned. Uh, we got some really great guests that we're going to be trying to line up. And uh, yeah, we're excited to see you guys next week. And we'll see you in the pre-show. I love you. Bye-bye-bye. Bye-bye. Love you long time. Bye-bye.